Steve Leisman joins us right now to talk about how much money has left, where it's gone, and why. And Steve, I would guess part of the why is that you can get higher yields other places. Yeah, and I got a chart for that, Becky. There's a lot of money sloshing around. Now, concern about these bank failures, it's eased for the moment, but the economic fallout from hundreds of billions of dollars scurrying around the financial system may yet to be felt as money surges into places where it will likely not be helping the real economy. Take a look. Money started leaving the banking system as early as December 2021. It accelerated with the failure of Silicon Valley Bank. $600 billion is out of the biggest 25 banks, $150 billion leaving the smaller banks. Money market funds, they were among the big recipients, with their assets surging by more than a half a trillion dollars, the bulk of that in just the past month. Other funds, of course, went directly into treasuries. In turn, money markets keep a lot of money on deposit at the Fed or in short-term treasuries where it finances the government, but not necessarily Main Street. Money has moved out of banks for two reasons, concern about safety, and as Becky just said, low rates. Take a look at this. Money market rates rose along with the Fed funds rate. The banks, according to the New York Fed, they kept rates low and saw deposits flood. That's the green line. That's the bank deposit, deposit rate. Part of this was a choice, though. Banks decided to keep profits high by not paying up for deposits, but it also reflects their lack of need for deposits to make loans because what did they do? They tightened their credit standards. What does that all mean for the economy? A sudden tightening in lending standards, says Oxford Economics, now would imply a peak drag of 0.7 percentage points on GDP growth later this year or early next. Credit tightening could mean the Fed needs to raise rates less, but the expense of the, expense of the tightening can't be known yet. The money, it's still moving around the financial system, but for now, more and more, it's in a place where it's going to be tougher for Main Street businesses to get a loan to start up and to expand. Becky? Steve, just the impact of tightening credit standards on the economy. I mean, I've, I've seen some estimates that it's quite a bit more, uh, 1%, 1.5%, even potentially more than that. Yeah, Oxford is, is a, maybe a little bit on the low side, but it also depends on how much credit standards you're, or how much tightening you're really building into your base case. Uh, you know, autos could be harder to get. The trouble is, Becky, it then, it, it's not necessarily linear, right? Is that you have X decline in, in, in lending standards, but you could have 2X impact on the economy if these things don't work themselves out. It's really interesting. You know, JP Morgan, they would have been a recipient of deposits. But they may not want those deposits, right? That could have been a flight to safety. And, and Jamie Dimon may not want that money. He may not need it for lending. So the real question is, it's, it's like a game of musical chairs where it all ends up at the end. And can it be harder or easier as a result of all this money sloshing around for businesses to get a loan and expand?